do we want to play at the moment is Manchester City away? I don't know, really. It's a good good question. I don't know if that's actually the case. I mean, um, we're enormously wary of the fixture because we know how easy it is to, to get heavily beaten up there because of their enormous attacking talent and, of course, the, the wealth of talent that uh, Pep has at his disposal. But um, I still think it's a, a good game to play. Um, I'm hoping that the confidence won't have been totally shattered by the the last-minute goal in the in the in the last game, where in actual fact the second half performance was probably a, as good as we've given for a long period of time. So I'm rather hoping that they'll think more about the way we actually played against Brentford in the second half, and not just the fact that we've once again had to swallow that bitter pill of a defeat. I was going to say, going up there, despite whatever the result might be, obviously you'd like to get a result, but if it's a good performance. That could be a real boost going forward, couldn't it? In a way, is it a free hit? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that the problem with that is it, it, it might be <laughs> even possible for me to see it as a free hit sitting here on Thursday afternoon, but I don't think I'm going to see it as a free hit at three o'clock on Saturday. That's the problem because then I'm going to be so concerned about how they're capable of you know, cutting our defence uh, to ribbons and, and, and creating spaces that we just have found ourselves unable to block. But I think that the players have done exceptionally well this week, you know, after the bitter disappointment of that 95th minute goal, which cost us, in my opinion, a well des uh, a well earned, or what should have been a well earned point. Um, we've had to pick ourselves up. But I must say, in the training sessions, the preparation for the game coming up has been as good as I can expected or want it to be and I've not seen any falling off in any way of the level of attention and desire if you like to do the right thing so that gives me some hope that we'll be able to go up there and like you say give some sort of performance like we did say at Liverpool where despite a defeat you can come away thinking well we aren't that bad. Well, it's not a happy hunting ground in recent history for Watford obviously all before your time it's not a happy hunting ground for many. The many teams, to be fair. It's never been one for me either. So. <laughs> well, I thought you'd done right recently up there, haven't you? We won one and drew one. We won one and drew one, and then we lost one 4-0 after a very good 55 minutes, but when the first one went in, we considered three more. But, yeah, we've we've done OK up there. You know, we've, we've done what teams like ourselves, Crystal Palace, you know, when I was at Fulham, teams like that can do, i.e. work very hard to be well organised and try and frustrate the opposition because... We haven't been good enough, any of the teams I've coached at Man City, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. Um, I think it's, for Watford, lost all of the last 14, conceding 53 goals. <laughs> Ancient history. It's all I'm glad you came today. Yeah. It's all about the future though, right? It doesn't matter the past, does it? <clears throat> no. I mean, to be honest, it wouldn't have been a statistic that I a, knew about, I do now. And if you don't mind, I shan't be using it. Um, it's not a statistic which I think would in any way motivate the players. Uh, we're going to stick very strictly and boringly, if you like, to discussing the tasks that we see ahead of us and what we can do to the best of our ability to ask as many questions of Man City as we can. I mean, we're unfortunate, again, in the sense that there could have been a time where you go to Man City where they... They've been between fixtures, they've got a Champions League game coming up. They've already sewn the league up, so they've got no worries in that respect. So, you know, you go up there and they're just in party mood. Now, of course, we're going to meet a deadly serious Man City who, if they don't beat us and get three points, it's going to be a massive blow to their... Uh, and, uh, you know, Pep didn't speak to me for a long time after Palace managed to steal a, a win up there. He, if we get a win this time, he'll probably never speak to me again. He might use that for his team talk, his previous experience. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think I think his team talk will be much more about what he requires his players to do. But the good thing he he can look towards as as Jurgen can. <coughs> I mean I've got such a big squad that changes are, are not only possible, you know, they're probably even desirable. And I said to you when you arrived that I said wrong because you corrected me at the time that your home fixtures were, were going to be key and you said well actually when we survived at Fulham it, it was the away fixtures. It was, yeah. And it's been similar this time hasn't it? The no. results have been better away than at home. 
Yeah, maybe, but I mean, the fact is, it, it, unfortunately, we, we are where we are because of the home fixtures. I mean, you can't consistently lose matches at home, and if I just take the ones that I've been involved in, there's at least two of those where we really should not have not have lost. We should have at least got something from the game, but we haven't uh, through various <laughs> circumstances, and you can never shy away from that, and it would be very foolish to start saying, well, it's not damaged us, it's not been that important, it's not winning at home because we've been a bit better away from home. If we have, it's purely a hazard that we've been better away from home. There's no no way I can point to anything which suggests why we are better away from home. Do you at any point look ahead at the fixtures that are coming up there? I'm obviously talking about the six pointers you've got coming up at home against Burnley and Everton and obviously there against Palace as well. Obviously, games that you're more likely to, to win than Manchester City. Can you kind of think ahead to that when you look into the City? Yeah, I mean, you do, obviously. You do think ill in those terms. It's only, only natural. But it's dangerous because we that's how we were thinking, really, after beating Southampton and doing very, very well at Liverpool. We obviously thought now with two home games against against Leeds and against Brentford, this is an ideal opportunity to get six points and to lift ourselves up the table and look what's happened, you know, we haven't even taken one point. So if anything we've we've gone deeper into the mire rather than risen above it. So in actual fact, uh, of course we do think that way. Of course we still believe, we still have faith and we still hope that what you're suggesting is going to be the case. But uh, at the moment it's been enough for us to start doing everything in our power to prepare the game on Saturday against Man City in the hope that, as you rightly said earlier on, we can get some degree of confidence for the game. I don't know whether you've ever heard of uh, an organisation called League Predictor 538. Well, I, I haven't, but what you're going to tell me is that probably our chances of surviving are as slim as make no difference, and so therefore... I, don't know they, I guess it's algorithms or something, but they're saying that, what, a 98% certain to go down. Yeah, there you go, yeah. I can only take some comfort from that that my first job, which was a fortunate one because it sort of launched my career by taking a, a team that had only, only avoided relegation on goal difference and had been up and down from the top division in Sweden and the second division about four times during the previous five years, that at the start of that season we actually had a 100% prediction that the team would get relegated and we won the league. So miracles do happen. Last question, I know you've got a lot on your plate, but uh, even less likely to get a job as a senior reporter, but don't ask you. <laughs> <laughs> then please do. Eric Ten Hag, good appointment or...? Well, I don't know him, I'm so I really can't make it. I mean, Ralph, when he was appointed and I was asked the question, I, I do know Ralph and, and had contact with him, so I could say a few words about him. But it would be very foolish for me to say anything about Eric Ten Hag, so quite frankly, other than like any football supporter. I know he's done a wonderful job at Ajax and had a great success, not just in the league, but in Europe. So that I know like everybody else, but that's as far as my knowledge stretches, I'm afraid. You managed massive clubs. You managed England. You managed the North West. You've got lots of experience in the Premier League. Ajax and Manchester United are a different kettle of fish, aren't they? Well, it's the Dutch football and... and, and uh, Premier League for well, of course there's a difference between those two but you know you can't deny the success that Ajax have had with him and with lots of other coaches before him you know they've had a succession of incredible legendary coaches going back to my friend Mikel to, to Johan Cruyff to Louis van Gaal you're talking about a list of people really all of whom became recognised as some of the best coaches ever to grace our game so there's no reason to believe that Eric Ten Hag, who they've obviously given due diligence in terms of their appointment, isn't just as good as those three I've just named. And if he gets into that category of manager, then they've got they've got a wonder manager. I'm not going to mention your predecessor, Crystal Palace. Thank you very much. Good. My predecessor, Crystal Palace. Right. Oh, Frank. Yeah, of course he was there too. Yeah, I figured. So I. My, my short-term memory is not as good as my long-term memory. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right, Jake. I'm right. You're just to run us through any team news or injuries? Well, we're, we're, we're monitoring one or two uh, who haven't 
been able to train with us as fully as we would like during the week. But I'm expecting, strange enough, tomorrow to have a, a pretty clean bill of health with everybody. Uh, Cucho Hernandez, everybody knows, won't, won't be with us. Uh, there's a risk, I suppose, that one or two of these others that I really hope and believe will be okay tomorrow might not quite make it or might come out to the training session and decide to need an, an extra a week. Um, but at the moment, it's looking pretty good in, in, in that respect. Obviously, you talked about the prospect of playing away at City, but in more general terms, when you're down at this end of the league, what do you think you need to take to a team like City who are fighting at the top of the table in order to try and be successful? Well, to some extent, everyone really knows what the situation is and everyone really knows when they pose the question you know, that the answer that I'm expected to give isn't really the answer that is the most relevant one. Because the fact is, I don't know, really, if you're in our situation, uh, what you can really say in terms of we're going to go to Man City and we're going to do this, that and the other. I mean, what we're going to do, we're going to try and make ourselves unpopular. Because if we want to make ourselves popular with Pep and the Man City crowd and everyone else in the country, all we do really is we just go hell for leather to try and win the game and try and match them at their own game. And that, as at least 99% of people, certainly those working in football, knows a recipe for disaster. So our only chance really is to go there and give their play the respect it deserves and to make certain that we make life as difficult for them as we possibly can, that you know we seal the spaces that they need to get into goal scoring positions. We try and make it very hard for their incredible quality players in the final third of the field to produce the passes or the crosses they need to produce. And then we hope, of course, like everyone that goes up there, that when we do get the ball, there'll be enough in our team, especially on the counter attack, to give them a few problems of their own to solve. But that's really all you can do. And then I think you promise beyond that is just, uh, leading people to believe in a fantasy football world. You know, they're, they're not top of the table and have won goodness knows how many games in a row for nothing. And if there was a simple solution to, well, if you do this, you'll start to beat them, then we wouldn't be the first team to, to try it. There have been lots of teams before us who would have tried it. I spoke to uh, Kucha a little bit earlier. He said that you know, players need to have courage onto the pitch. Mm. What do you think, he, what does he sort of mean by that in terms of, yeah? I don't to... know. You'd have to ask him, I mean, courage is a, you're talking about physical courage or mental courage? What's he talking about? Well, both, I suppose. Right, I suppose, yeah. Well, it's one of, courage is one of those qualities, really, that you want to see in your players in every game. So I don't know that whether you're playing Man City away or Brentford at home, I don't know when you would push courage aside and say we don't need it today and now we do I think it's one of those things you need at all times and I've got to say that a lot of things that we say in football I'm not blaming Cucho here because I'm guilty of it myself they are they are words really that don't have the sort of relevance that one should really give them uh, uh, it's, a, it's an important word being courageous is a we all, we'd all agree what a wonderful quality, you know, people who, who are courageous, but how do you become courageous? And what does, what does your manager tell you before you go out, before you play the game that suddenly turns you from someone who isn't particularly courageous to someone who is courageous? I don't know. But anyone who can tell me what to say, I'll say it. Okay, well, best of luck. Thank you very much. George, <laughs> that might be about the best thing you can, so I think. I'll go with David. Yeah. Right, in which case that, that's the end of the...